Hey everyone, so today we're doing something a little bit different and we are unboxing my new sword from Goryeo Swords. So I bought this sword online from Goryeo Swords um, and the, the swordsmith gave me a pretty good deal so he made it 2,200 US dollars. So I thought that's a really good price for a um, Tamahagane sword made traditionally the whole process all the way through. Then I got some engraving done and that was 50 US dollars and then because of coronavirus then shipping was 250 US dollars. Quite expensive but not unreasonable. So so far then it's 2500 US dollars which is I thought not a bad price. However what I didn't account for was the customs import fees, um, customs brokerage, the whole lot of actually getting it into my country Australia. And so 2500 US dollars for this package and so in Australian dollars that's 3600 still a pretty good deal for a traditional sword. Now after that then um, the customs taxes and fees were $620 and the customs brokerage fee was $100 and the um, airport shipping and handling fees which was not to get it to me personally but for them to unload it off the airplane and put it into their storage and then from their storage to my car a total distance of maybe 10 meters cost me $120. So all up all together it was $4,400 um, a little bit shy of $4,450 Australian dollars. So it was quite expensive and it was quite a bit more than I accounted for because of customs. And so as a note to anyone who's going to import swords, um, please check the, the customs fees before you do it, um, otherwise you end up like me spending a lot more than I expected and wanted to. But that's enough about that, let's get to opening this and see what's in the package. So there's a few things in here, there's the sword, a lot of packaging. This looks like a cleaning and maintenance kit, and I think this is probably the sword belt. So let's open it and see. Also there's this, this envelope. Oh, if you look at that. So this is a certificate of authenticity. Um, I would assume it says uh, what the actual blade is and the specifications of it. I will get that chance out and I'll see. I'll, I'll let you guys know in probably over here somewhere. That's it in this package. So like I thought this is a, um, a cleaning and maintenance kit. We've got the brass hammer, a um, little bit of choji oil, a powder stone and some rice paper wipes. I'm sure you've seen me use some of these on my channel but this one is actually a lot nicer quality than my other ones so this is a nice addition to have. So this here is the sword belt it's quite a nice patterned leather. Um, I'm a pretty skinny guy so I don't know if this will actually fit me I really hope it does. So now all that's left is the sword. It comes in a pretty nice sword bag um, and if you follow my channel then you know that the swords that I currently own are nowhere near this expensive and as such this is the nicest sword bag that I've ever held in my grubby little hands. There's something else in here. This is one heck of a nice sword. So this is a traditional Korean Gyolongkum, which is the swords that the Royal Guards use. Um, there's a nice digital tassel here. And these um, golden ornaments are based off the, the paintings that you see um, in traditional Asian paintings, like those clouds and things like that. But they're made in actual metal work and then stuck onto the blade. And this guard here is an actual antique from the late 1700s or early 1800s um, that was used on an actual sword. So it's really cool having a piece of history here on the sword. 
I'm not sure what's on the end here, so let's have a look. Oh wow. That's quite a nice tassel here. And this, this sword, unlike a Japanese sword, um, it's held similar to a Tachi, but it has a swivel clip here. So we'll see how that goes. So I'm not sure if you can see that, but the swivel clip has a lot of detail um, engraved into it. And then there's obviously this quite nice attachment here. Alright, so now it comes to the blade. So this is a Tamahagane blade. And if you look pretty closely, then you can actually see the variations in the steel from it being folded over on itself. And there's quite a nice harmonic, it's quite subtle. Um, yeah. It's quite a wide blade as well. It's, it's noticeably wider, especially at the distal end as well. And this habaki is surprisingly red. I think it's actually a copper habaki, which is more traditional for Korean swords than the brass habaki. And it's surprisingly light, actually, for its length. Uh, this is a 76 centimeter blade length, and when I hold it, I do realize that it is, well, I do note that it is longer than my normal swords, and it feels quite different. So I'm at my parents' place, so I don't actually have the high ceiling to swing the sword around like I would at my place. But in the hands, it feels quite nice. I was a little bit worried about this wooden handle uh, and how it would feel in my hands, but it actually feels quite nice. sheath has basically no rattle. Oh, hang on. There's a bit of scuffing here actually. I think it might have been damaged in transit. So I'm going to take a photo of that and um, send it over to the seller and see if anything can be done about that. That's a little bit disappointing actually. Um, yeah. So if you have a look there, then the lacquer has been scuffed off from that. And my parcel wasn't opened in customs, so that might have happened in the packing and sending from Korea because uh, I don't think it happened over in Australia. So that's a, that's a little bit disappointing. So overall, um, apart from the little scuffing, I think this is a really nice looking sword and it feels fantastic in my hands to, to use. I will have to um, get an extra hole added to that belt so it actually fits around my waist and then I can wear it properly and see how that feels. So uh, putting on the belt, it actually does fit. Um, it just sits a little lower than the traditional, uh, the normal belt that I wear, but this is actually quite nice. Um, you can see it's got this decorative tassel. This can be removed for when you actually do cutting, but it's quite, it's, it's quite nice. And having this swivel is really cool. So in Korea, the archery is the main martial art, so then this way, the handle doesn't get in the way. And when you want the blade, then it comes out this way. That's the actual blade itself. got a really nice sword wind uh, and the Hamon is really really quite nice. Putting it back, flip it up. I will do a full review once when I've had a little bit of time with the sword, I've cut with the sword and all of this honeymoon excitement phase has worn off so I can give an objective non-biased review about the sword. So that will be coming in probably a couple of weeks. So that's all for today, and I'll see you next time.